Hey, happy Thanksgiving, and I want to talk about Thanksgiving. Um, I've had some things in my heart, and the Lord just encourages me. He just says, look, I raised you up for the end of time. I want you to share everything I've ever taught you. So I'm, I'm here right now to share some things with you. Um, Thanksgiving is a condition in your heart, and it's a lifestyle, and it's a habit. Um, somebody told me one time that the Levitical priest had watches. They had different times during the day when they went before the Lord on behalf of their, their families, their community, their, their cities, their neighborhoods, and the people of Israel and, and the whole world. They just went before God and were faithful um, to pray over everything that they had been assigned to pray by God for. And, but one part of that was thanksgiving, to be grateful to God and thank Him. And um, it, it changes your understanding of life. And people talk about how they want to be happy. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. We have seasons in our life of despair and heartache and seasons. Everybody has to go through the season where their parents die. That's a season. Everybody has it if they've got parents. Um, life has seasons. You, there are cycles in life. There, there are going to be ups and downs. There are valleys you go through and there are hills you get on every once in a while that are just filled with a lot of joy. But in life, there's a lot of heartache and struggle. And I don't know that there's anything such as, such as just happy, happy, happy all the time. That's not reality. But I, I want to talk about what Thanksgiving does. It shifts the diadem. It, it, it causes there to be a shift in your perspective, perspective and, it, and it makes you a happier person. It, it, it causes there to be the condition in your heart begins to shift and change. When you get into the habit of thanking God in everything, be grateful in all things. It says in the New Testament, be grateful in all things. Um, there's a story about Corey Ten Boone's sister when they were in the prison camps and, and with the Nazis. Uh, during World War II, they were two sisters and their family had taken care of Jewish people and they had been rounded up and put into the prison camps. And her older sister, and Corey Ten Boom was a saint and she just loved her older sister. But her older sister would say, don't complain about the fleas. They were just biting them all the time. She said, just be grateful in all things. And she would thank God for the fleas. When the war was over and everything was said and done, they found out from one of the prison guards, one of the Nazi prison guards, he told them, he said, we never went into the barracks where you women were because the fleas were so bad. They never went in there. They never pestered them. They never bothered them. They didn't go in there to rape them. And so the fleas had turned out to be a blessing. And I tell people, I said, if you don't know what to thank God for, just thank him for the breath because there are people hooked up to machines where they have to breathe with a machine. And they would love to be able to have breath. So there's always something you can be grateful to the Lord about. But I also want to talk about the condition of the human heart. I'm going to bring up a scripture. And I'm going to read the scripture above it. Because that's insightful. This is uh, from out of Second uh, Chronicles. It's chapter 7. I'm going to go to the verse above it. This would be verse 13. I'm going to read verse 13 and verse 14. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is a good day to say this verse. This is a good day for me to be speaking about these things. But I want to talk about what's going on in this passage. There's an humbling of yourself before the living God. And there's also prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are something that helps you to humble yourself. It shifts perspective. We're talking about a shift in perspective in our mindset. And I want people to have this. I want people to have uh, the joy of their, of their salvation in Christ I, I, and to be able to come into a lifestyle where they're grateful in all things, just to be grateful to God and, rec and, and walk in the fear, the humble, humble fear of God. And, um, but I want to capitalize on that scripture about 
prayer and fast because fasting um and and the lord will give you a fast he's you go to god about that he i have friends that have to have uh glucose they have to have sugar uh because they they get run down without it they have to drink fruit juice things like that because they get they get burned out and and they 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 have to have it and and you know there people will be god will give you different types of fast he will give you um the daniel's type of diet and the daniel type of fasting there, there are things you can do in god uh specifically for you i fast without eating food i i've never had a fast where i don't drink water um but I'll, i will go without food and i will go the amount of time the lord tells me and I'm, I have the grace from God to do it, and I have to stay close to the Lord when I do a prayer and fasting time because it, I have to have that intimacy with it. It's not, it's not going to do me any good to fast without prayer, and it's not going to do me any good to, fat, uh, to prayer without fasting if that's what the Lord is calling you to do. But when you're trying to shift the diadem and establish a shift, the prayer and fasting is pre pre prerequisite sorry it helps you it, it causes there to be that shift in your understanding and perspective and and it's interesting that when god wants to heal the land he starts off by saying prayer and fasting and the reason why is because it, it causes things that have been hidden in your understanding and in your heart to surface it causes places where you you've been blinded by something or maybe you've had been prideful about something it causes that humbling to come forth. It, it changes, it transforms your, your understanding of yourself. So I would encourage anybody who's trying to go into a deeper place with God to fast and pray and let it be the fast and prayer uh, time that he, he allots to you. It, and it may be food. It may be, um, you know, for a few days. It may be for a few hours. With me, it's usually half a day or, or part of a day or maybe the full day until dinner time or five o'clock when the day ends. But He'll give you a time slot, and and in that time, you go before you, the Lord and you you pray, and then you pull away and you get think you go and do things, and then you come back to the Lord and you pray, and you keep fasting, and then you come back to the Lord and you you pray again, and it's amazing the shift that will happen just during the day. But at the end of the day, when you conclude your fast time, you go back to the Lord one more time, and you sit down and you get real quiet with the Lord and you pray that's when you'll start really hearing things and the mountains begin to move and shift and it's really interesting and your perspective your perspective changes but anyway back to being grateful um i want to i'm I, i'm thankful that i live in a country where we actually have a national holiday where we can thank god it's it's important and um, he created us and made us, and he loves us deeply. And allow yourself to have that shift in your understanding. And, and I know that there are people that are enduring heartache. We're in a time of heartache, and we need to be in prayer about all these things because there's great suffering in the earth. And I would that you understood that the kingdom with, of heaven is within you. It is inside of you, and the, the kingdom inside of you is greater than your circumstances. It's greater than the evil around you. And you can stay close to God and cling to him through the storms of life and the difficulties of life and be transformed. And God will raise you up into a place where you're so much greater than whatever opposes you that you will be able to stand against it because Christ is in you to give you that over, overcoming victory. What is the overcoming victory? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. That's that deep, abiding understanding of who you are in Christ and what he has uh, purchased you through, through his salvation, his sacrifice on the cross. Your testimony, you walk testifying as a witness unto God, your testimony of Christ and you loved your life not unto death. That means you're the willingness to lay your life down, even, even in death, for, for the Lord. That's your overcoming power. But you will overcome. You have a kingdom of God inside of you that overcome and have the victory no matter what obstacle you're, you're, you're facing. 
Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So I just want to encourage everybody today. And we're going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our life, our salvation, our families, even the ones that are hard to get along with. We thank you. We thank you for where we were born in our lives. We thank you for our parents. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your salvation and breath and life and, and the, the breath, the natural breath that fills our lungs, but also the breath that came from Christ, the breath of God upon us, this life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, from the bottom of our heart for this great nation. May it be redeemed. May it be saved. May you wrap your arms around the nations and tribes and tongues and peoples of the world to redeem them. In the name of Jesus, so be it. Amen and amen.